All right, a very, very good morning to you and welcome back to Durban as uh, we broadcast ahead of the Durban July. It's the Hollywood Bets Durban July, new headline sponsor. Almost feels like a new reawakening that's happening here uh, in, uh, in, in Durban and all the surrounds. We're broadcasting from Umschlange, actually. We're at the Radisson Blue this morning. This is a newly opened hotel that uh, you'll find, I suppose, stealing a little bit of the skyline here, which is absolutely beautiful. And it has been a tough, tough time for the province, but it's... It's, uh, it's, it's now looking to the future and hoping that things are going to turn and certainly with the likes of events, big events, sporting events particularly, like this highlight on the calendar, the Durban July, they're hoping that the fortunes are going to change. But let, let me speak to my, my first guest because, because this, this is something that I think they've been waiting for for quite some time. We need Leib Ntungwa, who is the Deputy Head of Durban Tourism, with us here this morning. You must be feeling very exciting that finally we can start seeing this place coming alive again. Morning, Alien, and morning to the viewers. Indeed, it's very exciting for us as the city of Durban and uh, the province largely that finally, you know, after so long because of the COVID, uh, we've had to wait and not have gatherings and we are coming with a big bang, uh, a bounce back for the city of Durban. We are this weekend, um, starting actually this week, having this huge buzz, you know, all roads leading to Durban, everybody in South Africa, even outside, you know, uh, surrounding countries coming to Durban, descending to Durban to come and, um, you know, be part of the Hollywood's Durban uh, July 2022. So it's very exciting for us and we're really looking forward to a phenomenal weekend and um, it's indeed the rebirth and the relaunch of Durban going ahead because now the regulations are way much more relaxed and it's very exciting for us. It really is and I think a lot of people are feeling it because it has been difficult. I mean, if we if we have to look back, you know, the, the, the province suffering a triple whammy, whether we talk COVID, whether we talk the riots, whether we talk the floods, these have had devastating effects on KwaZulu-Natal. Now we're seeing, you know, that, that, that rebirth, the rebuilding, and it, it's still a long way to go, but I tell you what is encouraging for me is looking around, seeing construction, seeing things happening, is that you cannot sit down and allow these things to pull the city down and the province down, but it's actually just trying to get in. But in terms of, of, of you know, how hard is it going to be to bring this back to life? I mean, where, how is it looking at the moment? Okay, um, what, what is uh, good and encouraging for us is that ever since COVID as a city of Durban, we've uh, been able to really adapt to what COVID actually had because we evolved, came up with innovative ways of uh, putting the destination on the map. And also there's been a lot of work behind the scenes such that as we are here today here in Redison uh, Blue Hotel, it's one of you know our new uh, products uh, in the inventory of tourism products which has been hard at work building not stopping even during the COVID you know 19 so that is an indication that as a city of Durban there's been a lot of work happening and catalytic projects that are continuing to happen in around the city but more than anything it's also the tourism products within the city of Durban that continue to be resilient and they've actually evolved and right now as we speak the event space uh, as, as, as we are actually going to be having the July there's uh, many products uh, and uh, businesses in the value chain of the eventing that have actually been bouncing back and when you go to the different attractions of the city of Durban there's also that that is happening in terms of activities uh, ready for the visitors and they, they in as much as businesses suffered but the products have been resilient in terms of continuing to stay, stand firm and evolve and be ready to keep Durban moving keep Devon bouncing back, keep Devon open for business. Yeah, I, I, it's quite incredible how the resilience is here because it is, it, you can feel it. It, it, it's, it's a great thing. Let's talk about other events because I know that, you know, for instance, there was meant to be, if, if I'm not mistaken, it was meant, meant to be the Ironman and different events that were taking place that because of the levels of E. coli on the beaches, they've had to be closed. They couldn't do that. What's the situation there? Because obviously this is now, we're talking gravel, we're talking horse races, we're talking, you know, things that are out of the sea. But where are we with the status of that? Okay, at this point, in as much as we might be having the challenge, but there's many other facilities within the city that are actually open for, for, for events. Um, like for this weekend, we've got a whole jam-packed, uh, you know, activities of events. Beyond the July, um, uh, Devon July in Greyville, we also have set 
satellite activities happening in and around the townships. So this actually means people that are coming to Durban, because in Greyville there's 35,000 people that it can actually be accommodated. But because as the city we are actually preparing for much more people, we are having satellite experiences within uh, different parts of Durban in townships. For example, we have um, Max's Lifestyle, we have Mojo's Car Wash in the West, we've got Under the Moon, we've got Makaba Lounge in, in, in uh, the West, and also we, uh, we have uh, Makaka. So what is going to be happening there? The experience of the July will be filtered to those townships where people can actually go there and experience the betting, experience the fashion, experience the entertainment, which actually gives a lot of, you know, um, a, a, like a vibe of the July fever within Durban. Now, that actually says the eventing space is not only centered within the beach, uh, but it's also within other facilities. Yeah. But again, there's other activity uh, events which will be happening like the um, uh, Fek Deben Rocks and also um, the, the, the Mothers of All Parties at Ushaga Marine World right. and also any given Sunday right here in the coastal. So many products of tourism within Durban have many different events. And our tourism precincts like Umklanga, Chetwell Drive, Florida Road, there's going to be pop-up entertainment that is happening. So the eventing space is not, uh, while we're having the challenge within the beach yeah. um, in terms of mega events, it's just a temporary situation which we're looking forward that um, in time we'll come back and bounce back as Durban and have those mega events in the beachfront. But awesome. events that are not within the water but within the beachfront, they still do happen like beach volleyball, beach soccer. Yeah. We do have those that are in the pipeline to actually be part of the bounce back of the city of Durban. Wonderful. Just a quick one. Let's talk money. How much are we expecting this weekend to pull in? Uh, what, what does this do for the GDP of the province? Okay, what, what we, we, we're expecting uh, for this weekend, um, like within Greyville and, and surrounds Greyville, 35,000 people, and that is going to be injecting about 362 million uh, into you know the city and also a spend uh, happening and also the GDP. But more than anything for us, it's also the job creation that will be happening because it's part of recovery. A lot of people have lost jobs, so we're expecting uh, between 700 and 900 temporary jobs that are going to be created within the value space but beyond the July we are also in the winter season of the city of Durban where we're expecting about a million people to come because it's school holidays and people are coming with families to come and experience Durban so that again for us as the city we're expecting about 3.6 billion you know a, a GDP injection into the city wow. good luck beyond, yeah. it sounds amazing it sounds amazing you've got me excited for it I'm glad I'm yeah. really glad good luck with it and uh, we wish you all the best for this weekend and of course all of the holidays that are coming up. Wenile, thank you. Wenile uh, is, uh, of course, Wenile Mtungwe is the deputy head of Durban Tourism. I'm going to now pop across because, you know, I've been seeing these magnificent models standing over here and the jockeys that are standing, oh, sitting actually now. And uh, this is really what this Durban July is all about. It's not just about, uh, the, you know, we, we're talking the serious side of business and all of that stuff. But the reality is, is that there is fashion, there are horses, there are jockeys, and there's just general fun that's here and it's going to happen and joining me now to chat a little bit about what we can expect on the day is Stephen Marshall who's from Gold Circle. Stephen you must be one happy man to finally I mean obviously the event has been happening but in an empty gravel now there are people that are going to pack those stadiums and we're going to finally get that vibe back. Thanks, Leanne. Yeah, the last two years running it behind closed doors, it hasn't been an event really, it's just been a horse race. Exactly. And um, yeah, obviously it's been devastating for the many hospitality uh, marquees, the entertainers, the fashion side. Uh, whilst we have tried to um, you know, bring those core pillars, which are fashion, entertainment and racing, into the event behind closed doors with virtual parties and the like. Um, you know, still having our fashion program, but not being able to have it out in public, uh, not having our public fashion uh, on, on the day. Um, all of those things, um, it did definitely take away from the event, but we're so glad that uh, we, we are where we are today. And uh, to be expecting between 30 and 35,000 people is even better than we were expecting last week uh, before the lockdown restrictions were lifted. Um, so things are really looking up and I think this is going to be a massive step um, to, to getting this event back to the popularity that it was pre-COVID. Yeah, and it is. I mean, it is a challenge. It is hard to, to, to get people back because financially people are under a lot of strain. 
train. So that's that's the reality. However, you've made it very accessible for the public to get in there. So you're talking 35,000 people perhaps maybe going, but there could be a lot more that actually do arrive because you've got the general standing areas and, and where people can just come in. What are we talking ticket prices? Ticket prices, just to get into the race course, is 230 Rand for a general access. Obviously, uh, if you look at the hospitality options, uh, those go those vary um, yeah. greatly. And, and, and you get to. <laughs> and you've got to score an invite. <laughs> <laughs> and you get to the real five star experiences. So, the, the great thing about the Hollywood Best of July is there, there is literally something for everyone. We've got two stages planned on the day. Uh, Felix Schlopier will be uh, hosting one of those stages, a uh, well known influencer, and uh, there'll be entertainment on those, there'll be fashion on those. We've got our fashion, public fashion program um, on, on that stage, the public stage as well. There'll be pop-up bars, there are food vendors, uh, everything is happening on the day. So just for a public access at 230 Rand, you're going to get the full Hollywood Best Durban July experience. You know what, you know what excites me is just the, the, the industries that you're mentioning. And these are the guys that, that truly, when it's come to these lockdowns and struggling financially, they haven't been working. They haven't been able to get out there. I mean, sporting venues have been on minimal capacity. So now the fact that people are coming back, that job creation we were talking about earlier, the fact that the jockeys get to actually run in front of people, I mean, that's got to be... That's got to be an incredible experience for them, which I'm going to steal a question to one of them in a short while. But I want to ask you, quite a sad moment, however, and I was quite excited to read about the fact that there was going to be a female that was going to be participating in this big race. And unfortunately, she can't be there. What's going on? What happened? Such devastating news. Yeah. We were so looking forward to Rachel Venneke being the first female jockey to participate in, in the Hollywood Best Durban July. Unfortunately, the last race on Monday, prior to this weekend, um, her, her horse reared and, and she hurt herself. She, she suffered concussion. Um, it is a precautionary measure, um, but obviously uh, her health is, is paramount and uh, I have no doubt that she will be back um, next year. She's yeah. our leading uh, apprentice jockey in the country, so in a month's time it's, it's more than likely that she will be crowned a champion apprentice of, of South Africa, which is, which is amazing. Um, and she'll go from strength to strength um, and no doubt we'll, we'll see her here next year. Fantastic. Well, I hope so because that was just such an exciting moment to look forward to. Give us some tips, all right? I mean, this is what this is about, right? Besides the fashion, the celebrities, the everything, there are horse races that take place. That always blows my mind when it's now open because before it was only about the horse race. Now you've got a lot of competition in terms of these beautiful fashions and everything. So what are the tips? What are the big favorites for this weekend? Look, uh, there's, there's a filly called Captain's Ransom who's, who's running in the eighth race. Um, she's, I think she won 11 out of 13 races. So, you know, on this day, you've got the best of the best. The actual Hollywood Best Durban July is a very open race. It's the first time that the three-year-olds meet the older horses. So current uh, ruling favorite is Safe Passage, who's a three-year-old. Uh, my fancy, and, and I'm a bit biased because my father trains this horse as linebacker. Um, but then you've got the, the stalwart Do It Again, who's, who's won this race twice before. Um, he'll be the first horse in history if he wins it for a third time. So um, yeah, there's some history still to be made. Do it again, do it again. So that, that, that sounds like a good one. Am I I might go for that one. Thank you, Stephen. Good luck. I really wish you the best of luck for this weekend. I think it's going to be amazing. Okay, which jockey wants to speak to me? I, I literally want one question. Who's got the... Yeah, come on, you and I have been talking all morning. Don't be shy now. Can I show you our height difference? This for me is the best. <laughs> we won't talk about anything else. But what, what, what height does a jockey need to be? What is the, the, the kind of the, the ruling on heights? Well, to be honest, I'm... Um uh, five five, but uh, there are jockeys that are a lot more taller than me. Okay. So I wouldn't say what height a jockey should be. So there isn't really a height. There's no height, but the shorter, the smaller, the, the shorter, faster, the, the leader. <laughs> <laughs> they do say that dynamite comes in small packages, yeah. but uh, the main thing is when you maintain your weight. I think that's that's one of the, the the best thing that you should do. Amazing. So listen, talk to me. You are going to be racing now in a few of the with, with a few of the horses. Which ones are you going to be be riding? Um, I got a couple of. Uh, ride on the day. I'm riding Royce T and also I've got a, a best chance in the last race, in the yeah. 12th race. So I think that's one of my biggest chances for the day and I'm just hoping for a win. 
What does it feel like now? I mean, obviously you've been you've been racing, but not in front of an audience. What is it like now to actually have a crowd there? Do you even hear the crowd shouting when you're on those horses? You know, to be honest, it feels great. It feels oh. great. It's been it's been a while since we've had a crowd, and you know you, we do feel it, especially when you turn for home at the 550 meter mark. You can hear the shout, uh, the crowd shouting and cheering, and that also gives you a bit of an encouragement to just dig down deep and obviously has, ask your horse for the best. Fantastic. Well, listen, good luck. I didn't even ask you your name. Mpumelelo Mjoga. Listen, we're watching you. We're watching you. Which race are you in? I mean, uh, best one is in the last race, race 12. Okay, race 12. We're looking out for you. Good luck. Good luck. And to all of you, thank you. Thank you for standing here. It hasn't been the warmest morning, but you've made it look beautiful for us. So thank you so much. So I, I hope you're feeling the excitement. I really do, because this is, you know, as much as we talk so much about the, the, the things that get us down as South Africans, when you look around you, there is so much good that's happening behind the scenes and we keep in this place going. And that's what we're trying to do is show you South Africa is open. It is working. And tourism is probably one of our best bets in terms of, uh, of getting this place up and running again.